Hi, my name is Brad, and uh, today I'm going to be uh, show you how to do facial mocap using the latest Blender build version 2.6 that you can get at graphicall.org. Uh, you must download the latest trunk version there. It hasn't been officially released yet, so um, the official download from the Blender.org uh, website will not be sufficient. But I'll put the link in the description for you. Um, also, I'm trying to make this tutorial so that someone new can uh, to Blender can follow, and hopefully I won't go too quick. I will try to keep it slow. Um, I know that's what a lot of new people want, so uh, if I go too fast, just let me know in the comments, and I will try to do my next tutorial a little slower if that's the case. Um, I'm going to do this video in uh, three parts, so there'll be three three videos actually. Uh, the first one is going to be modeling a basic face. This is nothing fancy. It's just a square box that uh, with a mouth, and uh, so for you know for noobs to Blender, <laughs> uh, you'll be able to follow along. And then the second video will be um, uh, rigging that face, uh, setting up our rig to match the uh, uh, markers that I have set up on uh, the motion capture video that I'll be using as well. Um, just a, something you can follow along with, but in the end, if you're a more advanced user, you can uh, skip ahead to the uh, last video, and uh, which is going to be actually where we get into the motion capture itself. Uh, it's what this, video, this tutorial is all about, and um, we'll be using the Blender's new feature of motion tracking. So, uh, well, let's get started. If you don't already have a default cube, which you probably do, uh, if you use the keys, hold on a second, let me start the screencasting here. Um, I'm going to get rid of the in panel there, properties panel. And um, if you hit Shift and A, it will bring up your add panel, and you go up to Mesh. And go up to cube, select your cube if you don't already have one. Now, if you press one on your numpad key, it will put you to front perspective view. And if you hit control, alt, and zero on the numpad key, all at the same time, it will set the camera view to the same view that you're looking at. All right, so just to demonstrate what that looks like here, you can see the camera here. And if I press uh, Control Zero here, it now moves the camera up there. Okay, so what we're going to go is right back to one, which is front perspective view. Get this lined up just about right there. And Control Alt Zero, Numpad Zero, um, and that puts you in this view here. Now, what we want to do also. Let's uh, make sure with the camera selected, and also up here in the um, outliner, you can see camera selected. See, I can select cube or I can select camera. I can also select the cube by right-clicking on it or right-clicking on the camera, this outline here. So you see it's highlighted. So with the camera selected, if we hit pre press uh, G to grab, and we press, uh, we need the um, we need to move it, uh, center it up a little bit. Right about there. Now you see where here's the X axis, so we need to move it forward. So we need to be on the Y axis. So if we press G to grab again and Y to lock in the Y axis, move it forward. We're moving the camera up to where the cube is. And then it, let's just readjust this a little more. This time we're not locked in the axis. Just moving it around freely. Okay, that's good enough. All right, now what I'm going to do is press 0 to get out of camera view. 0 takes you back into camera view. 0 takes you out on the numpad. Um, and now I'm going to go up here where camera is, and I'm going to push this little eyeball, which restricts visibility in the viewport. So we're going to get rid of that camera so it's not in our way. And now press 1 again so we're in pers uh, front perspective. And let me see here. Oops. 
pressed five, so I read it. Oh. Okay, now, um, with the cube selected, we will hit, uh, we can either go down here to object, where it says object mode, and go up to edit mode, or we can just hit the tab key, which is shortcut key, takes you right into edit mode. So, we'll hit tab, go into edit mode, and then we will, um, over here in your tools panel, if you don't have that showing, you just hit T on your um, keyboard and it'll pop up the tools panel. And just go over here to subdivide. Do it one, two, three times, I would say. And now uh, we've got all these faces to work with. And if we go down here, you can see face select mode. You can also select line select mode or edge, edge loop. Um, and vertex select mode. Let's go to face and then we want to um, select by right clicking on some faces here. So if you hold down shift key you can select multiple faces and just select these faces right here. Oops. Okay. Now uh, having those faces selected uh, let's press uh, 3 on the numpad. And uh, we've totally lost it, but that takes us into side view. So let's go here. Let's move this over. Okay. Yeah. So we're in three here's front, and there's the side. That'd be the right perspective. If you hit the Z key, you can see through it. It takes you to wireframe mode. It's uh, similar to this button down here, which is um, back face calling. But uh, Z is just handier because it's a shortcut. All right, so um, we see where we're at here. Now we we want to we're making a mouth here on this uh, box. So what we want to do is we want to hit E to extrude and just pull this in just like that. Now you see this. There's a white line there. It's going to disappear when I click this. It just disappeared, and it shows the Y axis. If you don't have that line, just hit Y on your keyboard after you hit E to extrude, and it should show up. You may have to hit Y twice. Um, and then uh, if you continue to hit it, it goes through uh, uh, local and global axes, and then also it'll go into, uh, it'll just disappear totally and go back to unlocking the um, axis. So you're not locking the axis. But, um, okay, now I'm going to go back. Hit Z to go back to solid view. Hit 1 to go back to face, to our front view, front perspective. And uh, let's scroll up a little closer so we can see this. I'm going to also, um, I'm going to hit uh, the S key to size it up. I'm going to size it up a little bit in the back um, just to show you what that looks like. I'm going to hit S again just to there, so you can see what that looks like. All right. Okay. And now, um, what we want to do is, uh, I want to do a loop cut. And there's a couple ways you could do that. You could go over here to your tools panel, loop cut and slide, and do it that way. Or you can hit the shortcut key, Control R. Control R gives you this loop cut. You can see the purple line there. That's um, and what we want to do is if you move it around just right, you want to get it to where it lines up right about there. And if you click the uh, left click once, just once, you can still continue to slide it. And now we can adjust it this way. And you want to get it right about there and click it again. Now, uh, we've got our loop cut. So we want to go back to face select mode. And we want to select all these faces. Now you could just shift select all these. But there's a faster way. We can select this entire edge loop just by putting our mouse over the line. Let's put this here. Okay. See, so this line right here, or this line right here, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you put your mouse over it and press down the Alt key and then right-click, 
it selects the entire edge loop. So and that'll work for all these lines as long as you put it right on the line and not on the face. If you put it on the face, it'll select this edge loop or this edge loop or this edge loop. If you put it on the line, it selects that edge loop or that edge loop or that edge loop. See, and that's what we want to do. We want this edge loop right here. Now let's go back to uh, front view by pressing one on the numpad, and now we want to extrude this in a bit. So push E to extrude and S to size it in. But you see, it's not sizing right. And the reason why is because we got our um, Y axis is locked. So if we hit Y a couple times, oh, three times, there we go. Now, you may not have that line. If you don't have that line, don't press Y. Um, but now we can size it in, oh, say right about there. Yeah, that looks fine. And now. We want to smooth this out. So um, the way we'll smooth this out is we will, um, well, we'll do a box select. And we're going to do a, a um, not the typical box select, but a Alt and B. Uh, this is so we can hide what we're not wanting to, to use. So let's select what we want to view, and everything else will be hidden. So right about there. And now everything else is hidden. See how it does? And it goes from the camera perspective right here and shoots on over this way. So now all we got to do is um, we can select. We want to select this entire background here. So one way we could do that, we could just uh, put it on the line and hold down shift at the same time because we got this edge loop selected. So we want to keep, we want to just add to it, uh, um, amend to it. Um, and now we've got all that selected. And then also this inside one, we want to get that one selected. And then of course the back. Oh, no, we don't want to do that. Control Z will undo what we just did. Um, just remember that Control Z will come in handy. Okay, let's hit C for circle select and just select all these, and then right click to get out of that. Um, let's make sure we got them all. Looks like it to me. All right. And now um, we also want to select these faces here. Um, so we should be able to select the edge loop there. Yeah, sure done. Okay, now we got all those selected. And what we're going to do is we're going to subdivide this. And so we'll go over here to our tools panel and hit subdivide. Oh, just a, oh no, 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 no. Control Z, Control Z. I didn't mean to subdivide. I mean we gotta we're gonna smooth it. Smooth vertex up here. Smooth vertex. Just hit this a few times and smooth it out a bit. Now it's starting to look like a mouth, right? Okay, just like that. That looks pretty good. And I'm gonna tab back out of edit mode just to see what that looks like. All right. Oh. Okay. One thing I want to do too is going to undo our box select there. So if you press Alt and B again, it will bring everything back. So now we see everything. And now what we want to do is tab out of edit mode. And that looks pretty good. Now, the problem is it looks a little blocky. So one thing you might want to do is go over here to Smooth Shading and click Smooth. And now it is much smoother. And then tab back into edit mode. And now we want to give the face, this mouth, a color. So let's go over to our properties panel here and click on materials. And then go down to new. Now, and we're going to name this material body. Now, this material is assigned to the entire mesh. 
Now we want to push the plus sign over here, push that button, and hit new again. And then we're going to name this one mouth. And then with uh, mouth selected, um, let's change the color of this, change it to a reddish color. Somewhere, uh, don't have to be perfect, somewhere in there. And then hit assign. And watch what happens when I hit assign. Ooh, okay. Now, all these um, faces that are selected have now been assigned that color. It's, it's sort of like a vertex group, not quite. But um, yeah, so now we got uh, a color for that. Let's uh, change the body color just slightly to where it's off white, maybe it's slightly reddish. And eh, there, that's good enough. Okay, it's better for renders. And now, um, let's see, a tab back out just to see what that looks like. We're a bit back in object mode, just in case you haven't noticed. Um, and now, um, well, that's about it for um, making our our makeshift face.